Unit 4, Lesson A, Part 1. Um, you'll notice that there are lots of videos under Unit 4, Lesson A. Okay, this is factoring. And notice in big, bold, capital letters, do not allow yourself to fall behind. This is a big deal, guys. All right, it's not going to be easy. All right, but if you keep up, all right, you'll give yourself a very good chance of doing well with this. Okay. And it's something that won't go away for the rest of the school year. We'll continue uh, the next unit using factoring quite a bit. All right. So uh, this is the first part. We're learning how to GCF factor. That's greatest common factor. Okay. When we look, all right, at our video when you're done, hopefully you're able to say that, yes, I can actually find and factor out the GCF. Again, this is day one, okay, of what's going to be five or six days on factoring. All right, our key term is greatest common factor. That's the biggest factor of two or more monomials. All right. Now, keep in mind in the example you see there. All right, the numbers 30x and 60 have a lot of numbers that are common factors: two, three, five, and you can read them all there. All right, but only 30 is the biggest, and that was that's what we call the GCF. Okay. So, here's what we're gonna do. Taking a look at the first example, all right, we're going to locate the GCF. We're going to figure out what the GCF is first, okay? I see that 3 goes into both of these numbers. This has an X squared. This has a Y. There's nothing common between the X's and Y's, all right? So the only thing I can do is factor out a 3. That's my GCF, okay? So what I'm going to do is take my GCF and divide each part by it, all right? So that's going to become 4X squared plus 5y. All right, this is considered factored. We took out the GCF right now. Okay, we're going to learn lots of methods for factoring lots of different things, but it all starts with the GCF. We're going to be using this time and time again, so make sure you get good at this particular one. All right, so now let's look at the next one. Notice the difference between A and B, all right, is that instead of this being a Y, now it's an X in your problem. Now, my GCF is 3x, because not only do the numbers have a 3 in common, but they also both have x's, all right? My GCF is what I'm going to divide each piece by, and the result ends up in the parentheses. So this is 4x plus 5, all right? So what we're doing is the opposite of distributing. All right, and it's important to know because you can always check yourself to make sure it's right by going back and distributing that. All right, for example, 3 times 4 is 12x squared, and then 3 times 5y is 15y. So we know we're right. We can distribute here as well, all right, and double check ourselves. All right, let's take a look at C. One of the things you're going to learn in unit, uh, in lesson A, throughout the uh, different parts, is that anytime your lead coefficient is negative, you're going to factor out a negative with your GCF, okay? So we're going to take a negative out no matter what. Then I'm going to look between 20 and 16, okay? I'm pretty sure 4 is the GCF, all right, in terms of the numbers. Now I look at the X's, all right? This one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 X's. This one has 1, 2, 3, all right? That means that I can at least say that they have 3 in common. So I'm going to pull out x to the third. This is my GCF. This is what I divide by. Okay, remember, it's the opposite of distributing, so I'm going to do it to each piece. What we end up with is a negative divided by a negative is positive, so that's 5. And then we use the rules that we learned in Unit 3. We're dividing, same base, all right, subtract the exponents. On the next one, I get negative 4. And those are going to cancel out. So there's my answer. Okay. So once again, factoring, looking for GCFs is the opposite of the distributive property. All right. It's going to help us solve some equations in the next unit. All right. Let's look, look on at some more examples here. Okay. Example uh, 1D. Okay. When I look here, I'll notice, first of all, I could pull a 5 out of each of these. And then when it comes to the variables, if everything has a variable, you always take the smallest of the exponents. 
All right, so 5y squared because y squared is the smallest. If we kind of zip back up to the top here, you'll notice we took x to the third, and that was the smallest of the two exponents. Here we took x to the first because it was the smallest. And here, since they didn't have nothing, they didn't have anything in common, we didn't take anything out. All right, so I'm going to divide, once again, each piece by my GCF. I'm going to put my answer in the parentheses. Okay, so 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then again, we subtract the exponents to get y squared. That's 3. Subtract, you get 1. And then that's a negative 4. And those will cancel. So there's my factored answer. Okay. Last one of this type of example. All right, once again, we're going to look here. All right, and one of the things you need to know is what happens when you don't take out enough. Like, for example, you may look at this and say, oh, 2 will do it. All right. Well, when we look at 2, okay, and I go to divide by 2, I end up with 6 here, okay, 6y to 4th. And over here, I end up with a 9. But when I look at these two numbers, I know I could take a 3 out. So I could tell you right now that's not enough. So one of the things you have to do while you're doing these problems is make sure your answer is completely simplified or, or that you've taken out enough. Like, for example, 2, 3, and 4 have nothing in common with each other in terms of factors besides for positive 1. All right, and they're variables. Y squared, Y, there's no Y here. So I know I'm done in that problem. All right, so when I look here, all right, I could take out 6X squared, Y. Again, the variables are easy. Just take the smallest of them, all right, smallest exponent. So we're going to divide here and divide here. All right. So I end up with 2. The x's are the same size, so they cancel. y to the fourth plus, this is 3. And once again, the x's are going to cancel. And so are the y's. And there you go. Okay. Again, leave the u-tries. We'll work on those tomorrow a little bit. All right. On the back side of that page now, a few more examples. Okay. Now... Let's take a look at some multiple choice questions. This has been, uh, you know, on the test. Some people have been struggling with this idea of there being more than one possible answer. All right, so let's see if this is the case in this problem. All right, so we're asked, which of the following is a factor for this problem? All right, so we know that we could take out 3x as our GCF. Okay, so right now I know that's a factor. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3x. All right, and get a final answer. So that's going to be x squared minus 4. And guess what? There's your x squared minus 4. So there are two answers in this case. Later on, you're going to find out, not today, but when we get to the last of these videos, that this is actually not completely factored all the way. But we don't know difference of squares factoring yet, so we can't go any further. So we have two answers, a and d, in that problem. All right. Last type of example today. All right. Of course, finding the student mistake, okay? Notice it says a student has been given the expression right here and been asked to factor it. Below is the answer. Describe the mistake the student made. So what I'm going to look to do is what would I find as a GCF first? Okay, I see that there's a 3, and I may think that there's an X because I see the X here and an X here, but there's no X here. So right away I see that they made the mistake and that they factored out an X, okay? So... Below is the student answer. Describe the mistake that the student made. We would say the student factored out an X, but there is no X in the last term. So it cannot be part of the GCF. Running out of space there, sorry. All right, so something of that nature. Again, it doesn't have to be word for word with what we say. All right, but the idea is they took too much information out. There's no X to take out of the last piece, so they can't do that. All right. Uh, lastly, as always, please make sure you do this. Keep in mind, if, if you're only writing something here, we're assuming that you know exactly what you're doing. 
All right, if there's something you don't know how to do, please tell us. We want to know. We want to point out during class when we can help you on this stuff. All right, uh, we'll see you tomorrow.